are confident that every county will be able to move to 100% capacity by June 1st. All right, casual Vegas goers, now you can come back. Is the ace of Vegas, the ace of Vegas. Hey there, Spinners and Sharks, Ace of Vegas here, and I hope you're doing well. So yes, you heard old Spicy Steve right, Vegas is finally back in full swing. But now that you can return to the city of sin, the question remains, should you hit the Las Wages Strip, or are you better off in downtown Glitter Gulch? Well, I'm certainly not the first Vegas vlogger to take this topic on, nor will I be the last, but I suppose it's time to throw my hat into the arena and decide which is better. It's downtown Fremont Street versus the Las Vegas Strip here on Ace of Vegas. Let's go. So getting to Vegas is basically the same for either Fremont Street or the Strip. You'll fly in at the airport or you'll drive in. That's about it. Not terribly complex. So that's an instant draw, right? Well, not exactly, given that the arrivals are basically the same. Let's talk about getting around hotels and casinos either downtown or on the Strip. Fremont is easy to get around. You can Uber or Lyft down the street, but the entire Fremont Street experience itself is only the better part of five blocks. Downtown, a little larger. Regardless, you can very easily walk it. Most of the casinos have a garage out back, and of course, the deuce runs through the city. The Strip, on the other hand, is a little more complicated. The Las Vegas Strip itself is nearly five miles long from end to end, assuming you consider Stratosphere to be the end of the north side. Even the walk down to Circus Circus takes the better part of an hour or so coming from Mandalay Bay. Also, the Vegas Strip is known for its crippling gridlock traffic, meaning that at the wrong time of night or wrong time of day, it's easy to get stuck. There are a few other options like Lyft, the Deuce, and the Monorail, but hotels on the Strip are so titanic that even going from one hotel to another takes longer than it does to walk the entire Fremont Street experience. Given how much easier it is to get from place to place downtown, we're gonna give that point to Fremont Street Las Vegas in this first round. Okay, let's get this out of the way. Downtown rooms are basically just a step up from your locals. They're comfortable enough and do the job, and they're easy to get to and from Fremont in, but that's about it. They rarely have the frills, lighting, or even the comfort factor of many strip properties. Even higher-end properties like Circa are about on par with mid-level strip properties. The Strip, on the other hand, has a larger variety of rooms, often at a much higher quality, albeit for a higher price. Some hotel rooms are completely operated by remote control or via voice commands. And those are basic rooms at places like Aria, Wynn, and the Venetian. They're larger, prettier, and frankly, often much more comfortable. Easy point for the Strip, the room comparison is no contest. Strip hotels are known for being able to cater to guests of all types. Spa goers, thrill seekers, gamers, families, high rollers, and ballers on a budget. Their amenities reflect this, offering all sorts of different types of options for food, drink, and relaxation on property. Almost every property on the Strip has a spa, a pool, and a dozen different restaurants, a buffet, car rentals, concierge, and usually a whole lot more. And what they do have, they go all out with. Pools alone at properties like Mandalay Bay and MGM Grand can span the area of five football fields in some cases, and are usually open year-round. And let's not even get into the multi-level spas and salons. The Fremont Street experience is a bit more... Spartan. Don't get me wrong, the D, Golden Nugget, Plaza, and Circa are all great properties in their own right. But they don't offer a lot of the higher-end amenities that you'd find at places like Cosmo, Bellagio, or Caesars Palace. You're hard-pressed to find a good spot in a downtown casino in most cases, and they usually don't stack up compared to the resorts on the Strip that specialize in spas like the Vidara. And while there are some pretty cool rooftop pools like Stadium Swim and the Plaza's Pool, a high-quality downtown pool is much tougher to find due to the much more restrictive real estate situation. Meaning, the Strip takes victory in our challenge here. Now, I know what you're thinking. Ace. You say that atmosphere is really a question of preference, and I think you're right. Some people enjoy a relaxed, low-key atmosphere. Others enjoy a boisterous, high-energy experience. And the trouble is, both the Strip and Fremont Street can provide that. You can find an endless party day or night on the Strip between the variety of nightclubs, day clubs, concerts, and lounges. But Fremont Street is no slouch either. 
There's no shortage of stages in live entertainment day or night, though it's a bit more tame during the day and functions more as an outdoor mall. The Vegas Strip also offers similar energy with its spas and generally the Strip itself during the day. So this is a tie, right? Well, not exactly. While Fremont Street offers high-end experiences in a similar vein to the Strip, one thing that it has that the Strip doesn't is the old-school, rustic Vegas feel. While places like the Cromwell definitely offer a vintage feel, it's still got a very high-end manufactured vibe. Whereas downtown Vegas still feels like it's our parents' Vegas and still functions as ours too. It's very close, but downtown takes this round. Here's another category that doesn't seem like a contest, but it really is. Let's talk about attractions. Fremont Street is vintage Vegas at its finest, but it also features several modern attractions. Pools with literal shark pipes in them, gigantic swimming pools for football parties, rooftop pools, and zip lines that traverse the mall. Downtown Vegas has a lot going on. The Strip? Well, it has a lot more going on. Exploding volcanoes? Check. 10,000 PSI fountains? Check. Tiger sharks? Check. White tigers? Check. Arcades and roller coasters on the roof? Check. And those are just the MGM properties. Even before Resorts World opens up, the Strip has robot bartenders, flamingo habitats, and even a full-fledged amusement park or two. You're hard-pressed to say that there's nothing to do on Fremont, and the Strip even more so. It's a closer call than one might think, but due to the quantity of attractions with similar quality, the Strip gets the point this time. Now here's what the most important thing is to the hardcore Vegas gambler, the advantage. While you can get some quality wins on the strip, expect higher betting minimums, and frankly, worse odds. My favorite game, Blackjack, usually only offers rules that include 6-5 paybacks, or worse, gimmicky games with bad odds if your minimum bet is under 100 bucks or so. And let's not even talk about the slot machine holds. Downtown is generally much friendlier. While some properties do have higher betting minimums than others, they're generally lower than the strips, and also have much better odds. The slot machines are statistically looser, and frankly, the table games are better. Again, back to Blackjack, 3-2 is much friendlier to the budget player, as long as it isn't video Blackjack. The strip is a sucker bet in this category. The clear advantage goes to Fremont Street. Affordability can be tough to calculate in Vegas sometimes. Between hotel price advertisements and comps, it gets a little muddled. Or so it might seem. Let's talk about room pricing first. While room prices can be as low as $10 to $20 a night, they're often not really that low. That's because the resort fee is often excluded in advertised prices, then gets tacked on on the end and taxed separately. Occasionally, this even applies to room comps. When all is said and done, while room rates may be competitive, Vegas Strip hotels almost universally have resort fees, whereas they're a bit less consistent at downtown properties. And the ones that are, are typically lower. The Strip averages around $40 a night for resort fees at most resorts, whereas downtown is much closer to $30, if it's applicable at all. Additionally, with more expensive restaurants, higher betting minimums, and a generally worse set of drink services, it's a lot easier to run up a bill on the Strip than it is downtown. Don't let downtown fool you, it can get expensive too, but it's not as expensive as a similar experience on the Strip is. Even when we're factoring in comps, if you have to pay resort fees on your comps, you're definitely looking at a better experience downtown because those resort fees are cheaper. And that's if your property even charges a resort fee. Another point to downtown. Ooh, this is gonna be a struggle. Vegas never stops no matter where you are. You can be downtown, you can be on the strip, but there's always something going on all the time. Just by the merit of numbers, there's a little more Vegas on the Strip than downtown, and on the merit of more hotels, there's a little more real estate. But pound for pound, foot for foot, there's always a lounge, there's always a restaurant, and there's always a great way to spend some time in Vegas. Honestly, this one's too close to call. The final point here is a tie. 
score a 4.5 to 3.5 by the skin of their teeth, downtown Las Vegas wins it. While it's clear that you can have a good time on either side of the city, and that there are advantages to both options, downtown Las Vegas offers an overall superior core Vegas experience. Now, being realistic, your trip doesn't need to limit itself to either the Strip or downtown. You can easily plan a three-day trip that gets you the best of both worlds. And frankly, most Vegas goers already have a plan like that. The most hardcore Vegas faithful will spend most of their time downtown, whereas the more casual Vegas fans will set up camp on the Strip. In the end, it's really about personal preference, but if you're looking for the overall best Vegas experience, you'll likely have it downtown. The winner is the Fremont Street Experience downtown Las Vegas. Okay, Spinners and Sharks, that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed today's episode and found it informative, I'd appreciate a like, and feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. Do you prefer visiting the Vegas Strip or downtown Las Vegas when you travel? Whatever your thoughts may be, I'd love to hear them in the comment section down below. Until next time, though, this is Ace of Vegas signing off, wishing you all strong hands, and, of course, happy spinning, you guys. Viva Ace of Vegas. Viva Ace of Vegas. Viva, it's a Vegas. Viva, Viva, it's a Vegas.